Okay, well, this week's going to be really cool. We're going to look at Arter and some automation. This is some incredibly powerful stuff. We're not even going to uh, get nearly as deep into the power of it as, as we can. I just want to make sure you have a good uh, foundation. And then next week, we're going to we're gonna go so, show you some really cool things. So uh, stick with me. Okay, well, here we go. Uh, yeah, okay. Before we get started uh, on automation, I want to show you something we don't need automation for, and that's for a simple fade in and fade out. I can uh, do a simple fade in and fade out simply by hitting uh, the slash keys, uh, forward slash uh, to fade in on my... Uh, and notice, well, I mean, I don't know how you'd notice. This is brand new, but this will fade in uh, to its top volume across the, this period of time. And if I come down here, uh, I can hit backslash for slash out. Same thing, and I can move this around, and I can right-click it, and I can actually set a linear, slow, fast, uh, uh, what, whatever I'd want to do with uh, the fade out and fade in. So, <laughs> let's do fast. Okay. Uh, so, we won't need automation for something like that. Uh, I'll deactivate those. Okay, but here's what we can do with automation. And automation is very cool. It's a way, it's something you could never, never have on a... Uh, hardware synth what it does is it's going to let us control something about this track and record the something so if i was to and and we will this time i'm going to go to automation and we'll get with the fader and what this is going to do is as this track plays i'm going to move this fader and it will record what i've moved so let's uh back all the way up and bring the fader all the way down and as we play this track, uh, I'll, I'll move the fader up and down uh, for the drums, and this will record it. So uh, first, let's take a look at these uh, modes. I've got manual, play, write, and touch. Write is what I want when I'm recording this whole thing. So let's get started here. See that? See this down here where it's coming up? And hopefully now you hear the drums. Okay, and so that's how that works. Uh, you can you control the effect, and it records what you've done. Now, as you can see, that looks pretty crappy, so I can just take that and pull it all the way down. I'm just taking the mouse, right-clicking, and pulling it down to where it needs to go. So you can... Uh, let me zoom in here. Uh, and I can tweak this if I need to by bringing these various uh, parameters down or up or whatever it be. Uh, so if once we make these curves. So once again, for something simple like a fade in, fade out, uh, use your slash keys. But for something more complex like this, and oh, I do want to point out that it did record it. Uh, so if I come in here and start over... 
Notice you don't hear any drums. Okay, hopefully that convinced you that it did indeed record it, and when we play it back, it will it will respond to that. Now let's look at these modes for a minute. Manual means basically ignore any automation. Play is the one you've got when you don't want to re-record, and we just want to notice the faders. Notice the faders are responding. Right is what we did when we record. Now the the problem here is if I hit right, uh, and this is what touch is for. If I hit right, it's going to start recording this over from scratch and will completely ignore the recorded things. Touch, frankly, is something I don't use much, but it's if you want if you wanted to touch it up. So if I play touch and play this, and now I say, oops, drop it real quick. And notice how it made a quick drop in there. So touch is if you want to touch it up. I never use it. I always uh, kind of manually use my mouse. Uh, but that's that's it. That's all there is to automation. Uh, we can uh, uh, next time we're going to look at uh, automating effects. But this hopefully is kind of an intro that will that will give you the concept of we can. Um, Next time, we're going to take a flanger, and we're going to turn the flanger up high and low as we go through it. So it's not just for uh, the fader and pan, like you see here. Uh, oh, by the way, here's clear. That just removed all the automation. Uh, so it's not just for fading and panning. It's for any effect I put on here, any any uh, effect uh, here in the any inserts. As we talked about last time, or any any uh, aug sends, I can take that effect and I can manipulate it as we go through, and it will actually record the effects. So this is really cool because the thing is, it's recording for these plugins. I mean, pan and fade are native to Ardor here here in the workstation, but I can pick any one of the plugins here and change any of its parameters, and we'll see that next time. So hopefully. This is a short one to make up for last time on the marathon run. And this will uh, whet your appetite, give you a little idea, go out there, play with it. Uh, fade in, fade out, easy. Just use your slashes, right-click to change the, the, change the curve, uh, drag it however you want. Oh, yeah, we deactivated it. Uh, there we go. And drag your, your fades in and out. Uh, but for something more complex than a simple fade in and fade out, you've got the fader automation you can play with. Uh, otherwise, hey, I'll see you next time. Okay, well, that's it for this week. I hope you learned something. I hope that was clear. As always, any questions, let me know. Here's the versions I'm using. If uh, your stuff doesn't look like my stuff, check this first. And here are the uh, websites where you can find more about uh, this kind of st the, the products we're using. Uh, amazing stuff here. So uh, take a look. Have a blast.